This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. Skillshare is for creative and curious people, lifelong learners and real working creatives and is also catered to beginners. So don't worry if you don't have any founding or base knowledge in any topics. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and class projects. They have classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on feedback with a community of millions. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. Now then, as I mentioned in my last video when I was talking about Skillshare, I am actually currently participating in a course called DIY Product Photography. Myself and my girlfriend are launching yet another business together, which will be launching this summer, and I am trying to hone my skills on product photography. So that is by uh, a couple called Rachel Golotta and Daniel Inskeep. I'll leave that on the screen right now. That's one of the many, many courses that are available that you can apply to daily life and even a new business. The other brilliant thing is that Skillshare is incredibly affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And new on Skillshare is the live classes feature. There are live classes now that you can go and trial and get involved in. Now the kicker, the first 1,000 people to hit the very special link below will get free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership. That is a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership for the first 1,000 people that hit the link below. So go ahead, give that a hit. Hopefully you get there within the first 1,000 and you get your free trial. So sign up right now, get in the pot, and as always, Keep me posted with what you learn. Now let's get on with the video. specifically welcome back to my Land Rover Defender. Now most of you would have thought it's the last time you saw this on the channel months and months ago but the car is back. We've got a story to go into, there's a reason I'm back in it, there's a reason why it's not with its new owner and we're going to go into that. I'm actually driving all the way to Kent this morning in the Defender to get something sorted with it. And I thought, why not make a video? And why not explain exactly what has gone on with this car and why I've, I've received so many DMs off you lot saying, why on earth have you sold it? You should keep it, blah, blah, blah. And to be honest with you, I thought I was gonna keep it as well, but do you know what? A couple of months ago, I actually realized that this thing had been sat in storage for about 10 months. I hadn't driven it. It literally just been sitting there and I thought, what is the point in having this car? The finance on it is all but paid off. I've got quite a lot of cash in it and I'm not using this thing at all. And the final nail in the coffin was the extended ULEZ zone in London. This car, unfortunately, will be subject to an extra charge pretty much anywhere I'm likely to go in London. I'm gonna have to pay about 15 quid a day, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's just a pain in the backside. And then you've got congestion charge on top. So realistically, if I wanted to drive this thing in central London, it'd be about 25 quid a day or thereabouts which is just stupid. So yeah, all in all, I made a rash decision before I went to Barbados to list this thing for sale. So I gave it to Urban Automotive uh, to put on SOR. It's where I got the car in the first place. And they churn through defenders there. They sell them really quickly. Um, and because of COVID and staff shortages and whatever, the car didn't actually end up getting listed until, I think it was January. So I gave it to them in December. It wasn't January till the car got listed. The car was up for a few days. Uh, they had a load of interest on it. I did a video saying it's for sale and they got pestered actually before the car was actually listed. They got absolutely harassed on it. Uh, they had a load of offers on the car, a load of people wanting it, blah, blah, blah. A few people trying to do part X's and whatever. But at around the same time, a family friend got in touch and I didn't realize he kind of watched my videos or knew what was going on. He actually got in touch and said, Tom, I want your Defender. Please sell it to me. I know it's at Urban, um, but I really want it. So if there's anything we can do on it, please let me know. Um, so actually, and Urban were really good about it, I took it back off them and I've sold it to a family friend. There is an issue with the car though, that I don't want to let him have it with this issue still in place. I had some trouble with it a while ago, it ran out of battery and I went to open the bonnet and the bonnet release didn't open, so the bonnet release doesn't work, so you can't get the bonnet up. And unlike other defenders, you can't actually get into the bonnet through one of the vents. I've had security work done, meaning you can't open the bonnet 
any other way than with the bonnet release or with tools. So I've kind of stuffed myself to be fair. So that is why I'm off to Juice Motors to go and get it sorted. So all in all, it's been a bit of a faff. It's not been the most efficient sale, uh, but I'm really pleased it's going to someone that I know. And I've said to him, look, down the line, if you get bored of it, if you don't want it anymore, please do consider me for first refusal. I would probably buy the car back down the line. It is of no use to me at the moment. It's not getting any use whatsoever. I've got my Range Rover. It's not the car I'm gonna to use to shuttle back and forth from the Cotswolds in because it's just, well, you can hear it now, I'm shouting, I've got a sore throat. This is 68 miles an hour on the motorway, and it's just not the car you wanna be doing long journeys in. And in the Cotswolds, I'm not gonna to wanna to rattle around on those B roads in this anyway. I've got a Range Rover, why would I use this? So, for now, it is gonna be time to sadly say goodbye to this car. We're gonna to get to Juice Motors anyway. I'm gonna go and see whether or not they can actually repair the bonnet uh, latch thing. They've worked on this car from new. They've been absolutely fantastic there. Any Defender related stuff, make sure you take it to Juice. They're absolutely phenomenal. What that guy doesn't know about Defenders isn't worth knowing. He's done loads of work to this car over the years. Um, he's done all the servicing and everything. So um, he knows the car really well. And yes, so let's cut the chat there. Let's get to Juice. Let's have a little walk around the car and we'll see what's what. So here she is then parked up. I'm absolutely freezing, but let's have a little look. Here she is, it feels good. Get it back on the channel actually. I must admit, having just driven this round these little twisties here in the snow, I absolutely adore this car. I'm probably making a huge mistake getting rid of it, uh, but let's hope my friend gets bored of it and sells it back to me at some point. I don't think this is going to be the last we see of this car but i absolutely adore it i've got a confession to make actually i was driving it home the other day uh i took it to my girlfriend's quickly just to give it a run because i hadn't left it on trickle and i got pulled over by the police and actually fined for those number plates so technically you're not allowed to have black and silver plates on a car that's pre-1978 or 1980 or 72 or something basically it's too new to have black and silver plates i think they look cool but i got fined anyway um it was traffic police and they took one second and they just literally said, your plates are illegal, you're getting a fine. So um, yeah, 100 quid down the Swanee for that. But totally fair, totally fair, I'm in the wrong. But it's just cool, it's just so cool. I mean, it is hell to drive along the motorway and stuff like that. It's really not enjoyable to drive. Round town, it's not enjoyable to drive either at all. If it didn't look this good, no one would ever want one. If it didn't have all this kind of heritage uh, vibe to it, no one would really want one other than farmers. But it is a cool piece of motoring history and it's definitely, definitely worth sorting out and keeping pristine. So for those of you that haven't seen this car before, we'll open her up. Old school handles, a bit like a G-Wagon. But inside here, this came from Urban, so it came fairly well sorted. It's got the double din head unit there with smart um, car integration, Alcantara headlining, sound deadening. I've kept the OEM premium seats because I don't like bucket seats and defenders. I just never understood that. I've got a little subwoofer even on the back there. And you've got the folding seats in the back, not the benches. So those two fold down and there's two seats in the back. It's pretty sparse in here, but it's quite a cool place to be. And you've got all, obviously, low range and whatnot, your proper four by four stuff. Three pedals, manual, it's like driving a van, old school handbrake. It's not really much to it, the doors are pretty flimsy, but I've actually had loads of security work done to it. So as I said before, you can actually get into a lot of defenders um, through the through this vent here. You can take that off and you can get the bonnet cable and you can pull it and then you can get the bonnet open. You can pretty much nick whatever you like. Again, with the doors as well, these get stolen quite a lot, the doors. So I've actually got security screws fitted and also inside the door here, I've got these put in, which mean that they lock into basically the bulkhead when the door's shut and you can take screws off when the car's parked up but you won't be able to get the door off because it's locked into the car so all very smart and there's various other bits of security there's a tracker there's an alarm there's a ghost you name it 
it's on that car because these are stolen so, so much for parts and also to export. Anyway, my hands are literally falling off. So we're gonna get in. We're at Juice Motors actually. I'm actually round the back with various project cars going on. So we're gonna go in there, I'm gonna put my mask on and see what's going on. So we've got the car in the workshop. The issue was that this little matey down here, when you pull it, it kind of just came off and the cable was dangling down. So you can't actually open the bonnet at all. Chap here at Juice Motors is actually currently sorting it out. I'm not gonna shove the camera in his face whilst he's doing something. But all in all, it's annoying. I couldn't give it to my friend with a bonnet that doesn't open. I mean, it's just ridiculous. However, the battery actually in these is under the passenger seat. So it died a couple of times and the battery is actually under the passenger seat. So that's not a huge issue. However, it's just not acceptable selling it like that. So we're giving it a go. I think it's gonna need a little bit of force to get it open. So then grills off. Number plate's actually genuinely fallen off. The grill is on the floor there. Um, we've made our lives a little bit more difficult. As I was saying before, I've got a load of security measures done, which meant we couldn't just um, pop the bonnet in a usual fashion. So we've had to go in pretty aggressively. The Sam here is on the case. Knows what he's doing. Thank God it wasn't left to me. But this gives you an idea of how fresh this Defender actually is. And it's got about 2,200 miles on the clock. It's literally brand spanking new. I just don't think there are any of these on the market like this. I mean, I'm sure there's some in some lockup somewhere, but that's why I'm so keen that if at some point in the future, circumstances change my end and I have need for a Defender, I'll happily buy this thing back off the chap that has bought it. He's got an absolute gem. The more I look at it, the more I'm a little bit fuming that I'm getting rid of it actually. But um, yeah, not the, not the most fun job for Sam here. I feel a little bit guilty. One thing that they are doing here that's really important for Defenders actually, because their ride on them is terrible. They're putting air suspension, they're putting air shocks on Defenders and they're making them ride so, so much better. So this is a current project they've got in. I think this is actually something to do with the guys at Beyond Content who I've done a load of stuff with recently. Well, I filmed a load of stuff with in the past. Many of you will know Beyond Content. They make amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, stuff that's actually far too high quality for my channel. Um, but anyway, I think this is a project of theirs and they're currently working on that. So uh, it's a small world, the Defender community. And if you've got a Defender and it rides like hell, which it probably will do, um, do give Juice a shout for their suspension upgrade. It's actually really cost effective and completely transforms the car. So really, really cool. I didn't know they were doing that. So um, quite good on getting rid of it really. Otherwise I would have just come here and spent money. We, we have success. We have success, look at that. Wonderful stuff. So grill back on, and I'm actually gonna stick the plate in the front window. Hopefully I'll get home without being fined 100 quid again. But huge, huge thanks to Sam at Juice Motors. The guys here, I've got a YouTube channel. So if you're a Defender person, and even if you're not a Defender person, make sure you become a Defender person and go and check out the YouTube channel. They've always got mad projects on the go. And as I say, this thing from new has been looked after by Sam here, so make sure you go and check out the channel. I'll leave the link to their channel below, go and give them a subscription, and make sure you go and say hello from TGTV in the comments. And if you're already subscribed to them, then by all means. Sam, you got any words for them? Are we, do are we doing this? Are you in a YouTube mode cool this morning? Stuff. Follow me on YouTube. Give us a little follow on Instagram. Instagram uh, as well. Perfect, nice one. Thank you very much. I've ruined your Saturday morning with this, um, but he's not sworn at me yet, so I'm amazed by that. Uh, however, I'm gonna jump in the car now and we're gonna disappear off. Back in then, let's fire her up. Oh, listen to that diesel, lovely stuff. Help with the door closed. Bit of a slam. Oh. Let's reverse it out of there. That is that then, she is now done. She's now done, it's time to drive home and do a handover to her new owner i don't actually know when that's going to be but once again a huge huge shout to the guys at juice motors absolute class act and i think at some point i may be back in the defender pot as i said whether or not it's this one or a series 2a in the meantime i will probably get something at some point but for now i think i'm going to release some cash out of this because they've gone up in value i actually sold this for more than i bought it for and i just think it's silly sitting on the money may as well release some of it and someone else could enjoy this car, at least for the time being. So, from my Defender, I don't know when you're all gonna see it again. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe, and do subscribe to Juice Motors channel as well, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.